Late this summer, Chicago's most popular race announcer, Phil George F., became the center of controversy when he was fired from Arlington Park Racetrack. Well, the dust has settled, but George F.'s temper flares as he tells us the untold story. going right to the lead, followed by Sly Wing, second. Horse racing at Arlington Park Racetrack won't sound as exciting anymore. Oddly enough, that's the way track management wants it. Arlington's new president, John Mooney, tampered with racing tradition by forbidding announcer Phil George F. to use his trademark phrase when the horses enter the home stretch. Here they come, spinning out of the turn, Deep Yella. Apparently, it was a clash of styles that silenced George F., who had been the enthusiastic voice of racing at Arlington for 24 years. Although John Mooney declined comment on his reasons for firing George F. from Arlington, George F. fired out his side of the story when we joined him on opening day at Hawthorne Racetrack. Good to see you. It's good to be back, let me tell you. I'm sad about the regime, the concentration camp aura. It, uh, there's a climate of fear there, as opposed to, say, here at Hawthorne or at Sportsman's Park. How long did you know that your job was in jeopardy? I sensed it from opening day. I wasn't surprised about being fired. I was shocked the way it happened. I sensed it from the first time I met the man and from the comments that I heard him make behind my back to other people about my style of announcing. He wanted me to uh, tone it down, to make it dull, be a talking announcer, dramatize one race. Plus, he hated spinning out of the turn. He did not like that phrase at all. And uh, I explained to him it was my trademark, and finally I compromised with him, and I told him, you'll never hear it again. And I, for the last three weeks I worked there, I never used the term at all. Then the rumor went around that I was going to get fired. Uh, his assistant called me and said, Mr. Mooney would like to see you in his office after the last race. And I said, oh, it's about time somebody told me, and then he laughed. And I walked into his office. He told me that um, I betrayed his trust, that uh, I went to the press, and I did not go to, to this uh, TV critic. I said, he came to me, and I told him the truth. So he said, I believe it's only proper that I let you go. Do you regret disclosing criticisms about Mooney to the press? Oh, no, I don't regret it. No, I, I'm very pleased. It gave me a chance to expose the type of operation that they have. How did you feel when the fact, fans... In fact, he made a hero out of me, really, by firing me. Yeah. Spinning, out of, turn, Spinning out of the turn again. Yeah. In the last 24 years, Phil George F. has called 75,000 races and has missed only three days of work. He was fired from Arlington Park without severance pay. But what bothered him more was the forced retirement from race announcing. Seven weeks seems like forever when you're chomping at the bit to bring the thrill back to horse racing. I can't wait. I, 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 I did not sleep half the night. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. This is Phil George F., and it goes without saying it's great to be back. And it's a pleasure to welcome you to this, the opening day of the 1982 fall thoroughbred season here at Historic Hawthorne. When the horses appear on the track 10 minutes before each race, George F. must do his homework. He memorizes the horse order by the colors of the jockey's silks. Here are the eight horses in the first race. Number one, Sweeter Day. Sweeter Day has the red, the white dots, the red cap, Sweeter Day, the red, the white cap. Richard's Belief is in the orange, has the blue cap. Lavalier's the gray horse. He'll be easy. He's got the blue jersey. The gray horse, Deserving Don, is in the green. He has a black cap. Memorization green, black is cap, easy for George F., but calling ten races a day could severely strain his voice, but it doesn't. When I call a race, uh, I have learned to project, and I've learned not to change my voice, but I, I use a different portion of it, so I almost bypass my throat. So even if I had a sore throat, I can call a race. Now three minutes to post. Three minutes. I'm using my diaphragm, and I'm using the part of my larynx that I'm not using right now. Now one minute to post. When Mario Lanza, uh, when he would just be talking like I'm talking right now, and then he'd come out with that powerful tenor voice of his, and uh, he said he had to work at it. And this, this is one way he avoided hoarseness. And they're off. Terry Tabber down along the rail going right to the ladies. Mario Lanza died in 1959, the same year George F. started Tara calling Tabber races. But George F. has carried on the Lanza tradition of voice control. In fact, he listens to his hero for a daily dose of inspiration on the way to work each day. <laughs> in a head-and-head -head battle to say and as you can see they're well bunched Regina. we 
Leader Day now takes command ahead. To the Today, at the opening day, are you going to be using your trademark? You can bet on it. Get ready, here it comes. Here they come spinning out of the turn. Here they come spinning out of the turn. Here they come spinning out of the turn. And that's the first at Hawthorne. The bugle blows, and then I, I come alive. It's great to be alive, and I've got another nine races ahead of me. Well, Candace, you think he would be exhausted by the time he got to the racetrack from all that singing. Well, remember, when he gets to the racetrack, it's all down here, not up here. Oh, yeah, that's <laughs> So right. he doesn't wear out that Is voice. Is he an opera fan? No, he's not. And you think he would be with all that singing with Mario Lanz every day. <laughs> yeah. But no offense, Phil, I think we're much better off and lucky that you decided to go into announcing instead of singing. Singing, yes, all right. We'll be right back. Stay with us.